yet some way, some calendar you don't even know about works that you try to say, well, this is how they got three days and three nights out of it. Jesus said three days and three nights. He didn't say two days and a night. He didn't say two days and two nights. He said three days and three nights. Jan, you said that a hundred times. My wife would tell me after all you said it over and over again. Yes, I did. But I have to tell myself that. I've got to pound it in my head. You've got to know this because we don't want to accept it. And I have to share with you what I've learned over the past few years, that if one part of the Word of God is false, then it's all false. Did you know that? If any part of God's Word is not true, then all of it is a lie. Oh, Shannon, no, 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 that's not the way it is because we got all these men who translated it wrong. No. These were holy men of God. <coughs> Carried about by the Holy Spirit. God entrusted the Word to them. They guarded the Word for us. Today we have it. In its entirety. I've had so many people lately ask me about, what about the lost books that I hear about on History Channel? First of all, I want you to see the source. History Channel. History Channel is not the authority of God's Word. The Holy Spirit, and He teaches you, He will tell you and guide you in all truth. You see, folks, we've been living this lie. We've been handing down this thing called Easter to our kids. And this is not to make, this is no condemnation on anyone whatsoever. All I want to do is tell you the truth. The Easter tradition, the ritual goes back to some about 1,500 years before, about 1,500 years, 200 years, something like that, before Christ was even on this earth. It was the worship the Babylonians, they worshiped a goddess named Osiris. Anybody ever seen the tennis shoes of Osiris? <coughs> These Babylonians worshiped this goddess, Osiris, and she had a son who was killed, and she was a virgin who had a son, it says, in this legend. They worshipped this goddess Osiris. Her son was killed. And for 40 days they lamented him. And on the 40th day, he rose from the dead. In this, I'm not saying it's the truth. This is what their legend says. And so, in honor of this young man, Tammuz, who was killed and rose from the dead after 40 days, they had this period where they start out lamenting for him every year. And on the 40th day, they celebrate his resurrection. And on that day, Mama would have a ham in the oven. The children would hunt for eggs colored by them in the yard. And at the end of the day, they would take these eggs and offer them to this God, false God, that I can't pronounce his right name right, but it's O.S. Thor. And after the year's translation came to Easter, Jen, you're a liar, you're a heretic, you're a hypocrite. I don't believe it. Look it up. I did. I looked it up. And this is what I found out to be true. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 11, verse 6. <coughs> Blessed are you if you are not offended because of me. Mm -hmm. Not because of the pastor, but because of him. And you hear the truth, and it may sound foreign to you. You see, when your children start asking and seeking and knocking on the door of truth, what are you going to give them? Are you going to tell them the truth? Are you going to give them what the Word of God says so it will hold on and into them so when they grow old they won't depart? Are you going to give them some fable? Are you going to give them some pretend? Are you going to give them some fun? Are you going to give them some candy and give them this and that and the other and hope that this is all great and good because it's what I want to do because I love my kids. Folks, if you love your kids, tell them the truth. There's people who have been killed for this teaching. Bishop Polycarp, disciple of John, the revelator, would not celebrate like the priest wanted him to celebrate. He celebrated Passover and first fruits, and he was put to death for this teaching. God commands us to keep this feast. And what's the importance of the feast? The feast of first fruits explains. 
You see, if we go through and read back in Leviticus 23 in verse 11, here's what it says. He shall wave the sheep before the Lord to be accepted on your behalf on the day after the Sabbath. Now I want you to think about this. The day after the Sabbath on the week of Passover. This is called first fruits. Three full days, three full nights. We have the Sabbath on Saturday. The day <coughs> the new day begins, which is the first day of the week. Jesus rose from the grave. The Apostle Paul understood this. In 1 Corinthians 15, 23 It says, but now Christ is risen. Listen to this, folks. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Did you hear that? Yeah. He's become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. And as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ the first fruits, and afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Jesus rose from the grave on first fruits. Let me tell you what the first fruits offering is all about. The first fruits offering was the beginning of the harvest. And the, the, what they were to do, it says they were not to eat of certain types of food, certain types of bread, not eat of that new harvest until they take this first fruits offering to God and they give it to the priest. And the priest would take this sheep that was, everybody know what a sheep is? They would take the sheep, this barley, or, and, and some of us may look, may look like wheat stalks and, and, and the heads on it. And they would take and they would take and they would wave this before the Lord in the temple. And what this was doing was praying to God to guarantee the harvest. Jesus, our first fruits, he rose from the dead. He is this, what we study about and read about. He is the first fruits. The Apostle Paul understood this. He is the first fruits of those who will rise from the dead as well. How's that showing? The Bible tells us. Each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, and afterward those who are Christ at his coming. There's a resurrection day coming, folks. This is why I get excited. There's a resurrection day coming. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming back today, folks. He's coming back. We need to know this. We need to know he's coming back. You need to understand this. We celebrate first fruits because we know he rose from the dead. We know he's alive. He's at the right hand of power. And he promised us he is coming again. Parents, tell your children. Amen. Tell your children Jesus is coming back. Tell everyone. Stop telling these fables and lies. Stop making up stuff because it's fun. Stop telling the truth. Amen. Give up the truth. And it just might solve some problems in your family. It just might solve some problems in this world if we tell the truth. Yes. Because the truth shall make you free. Amen. I know the truth, friends. How about you? Do you know the truth? It may offend you. It's not, this is not trying to make you feel bad if you went on an Easter egg hunt, kids. It's not trying to make you feel bad if you say, well, we're having an Easter ham today. It's not what it's about. I'm not here to preach condemnation to you. I'm here to preach eternal salvation and life with God. Amen. And all you need to do is believe upon Him who saved you. Believe upon Him who died for you. He is your Passover. We talked about that last week. He is our Passover. He is the one who shed His blood for us. Yeah. And the Bible says anyone who trusts in Him will not miss out on this resurrection. Anyone who trusts in Him, the second death, have no power over Him. We need not worry anymore. Is you not, have you not seen the terminology that Jesus used in the Gospels? Have you not seen the terminology that is used here? Those who fall asleep, they didn't even say they died. Jesus said, if you believe in me, he says, I'm the resurrection of life. Even though a man were dead, he will live. There was a young girl who was dead, and he told them she's not dead. She's just asleep. The apostle Paul talks about those who are asleep. What does that mean, Shannon? I seen them. I was at their funeral. They're dead. They're graveyard dead. You're telling me they're not dead? I'm telling you that if they're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, they didn't experience death the way that we were supposed to experience death. That body laid down. 
that physical body stopped breathing and, and existing in this world the way we see it. That they didn't have to go through the horrific fear of death. As Paul says this, and go back to 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says this, the sting of death has been removed. Amen. The sting of death has been removed. Yeah. One of these days, this saying will be fulfilled that this mortal body will put on an immortal body. Even the springtime teaches us about the resurrection. Did you know that, folks? We got farmers all around us getting ready to go to work. Any farmers in here? Don't be afraid to raise your hand. I was a farmer. Not a shameful thing. Got a farmer in here? We're getting less and less all the time. I understand that. You sow ground, seed in the ground. Do you not? Your body gets planted in the ground, does it not? When we sow that seed in the ground, what do we expect to come up? Do we not expect that seed to come up and bring forth more? Do we not expect that? <coughs> the Bible teaches us that this body, this body gets planted in the ground. The one of these days going to sprout forth. It's going to be raised up again. Because Jesus was raised up again. You might say, well, Shannon, what's our, what are we going to look like? What are we going to be like? I want to tell you something. They didn't recognize Jesus at first. Did you know that? Mary's like to the gardener. You're the gardener. Tell me where he's at. Tell me where his body's at. I want to know where his body's at. The disciples didn't recognize him at first. Two men walking on the road to Emmaus didn't recognize him until he spoke and broke bread with him. They didn't recognize him, but there was something about him. It was his voice. And he was, and once he spoke, they knew him. Once he did something, like, oh wow, this is the Christ, this is the Messiah. Let me tell you what he was able to do, friends. He was able to walk through walls. He was able to appear in places just in the blink of an eye. Scripture teaches us that we are too going to be raised up just as he is. Yeah, I don't know about this. You don't have to know about it. My, from my word, you can read it for yourself. It's in there. And I'm telling you, folks, knowing the truth is liberating. I know the truth. And folks, I'm free. I'm free to serve God today. I'm free to preach the word of God to you today. I'm not under some bondage today. <laughs> I'm not under some form of ritualism or ceremonialism today. I am free. 